Sidney Portier was born on February 20th, 1927. The day that I'm releasing this video to you is his 94th birthday, and what an amazing 94 years it has been for him. We know a lot about many of his acting roles that were considered to be groundbreaking in his time, and we know about the awards he has received for his talents. So today, I'm hoping to celebrate his 94th birthday with you by sharing some lesser known facts about him. We'll do it as a list. 10 facts you didn't know about Sidney Poitier. If you like these videos about the biggest celebrities from the 1900s, subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know every time that I upload one of these videos or every time that I live stream. And comment, I subscribe, in the comment section so that I can say hello to you. Now, on to why you are here. In no particular order, here are 10 facts that you didn't know or probably didn't know about Sidney Poitier. Fact number one. Sidney Poitier is a citizen of the Bahamas, but he was born in the good old U.S. of A. In February 1927, his parents left Cat Island in the Bahamas to make a trip to Florida to sell produce. And on February 20th, Sidney Poitier was born two months premature. He was in such bad condition that his parents had to stay in Miami for his medical care for an extra three months just to make sure that he would survive. Fact number two, Sidney Poitier lived most of his childhood in the Bahamas, but he came back to America as a teenager and his path to success got off to a rough start. When he moved to New York City, he would take work as a dishwasher wherever he could get hired. At one establishment, he learned how to read for the first time in his life. A waiter would sit with him and help him with reading newspapers. His money was so low at this point that he had to sleep in bus station restrooms. Which takes us to fact number three. In an effort to get himself off the streets, he entered the U.S. Army. So, homeless and 16 years old, he lied about his age to get enlisted. He lied his way into the military, and he tried to lie his way out of it too. When he saw that a soldier's life wasn't for him, he tried to fake insanity in an attempt to get discharged. You might say that that was one of his first acting gigs. When the military staff offered to cure his insanity with shock therapy treatments, he admitted to lying about his age and was eventually discharged. Fact number four. Before anyone had ever seen him on a movie, Sidney Poitier started his entertainment career as a stage actor in theater in New York City. When he began practicing musical numbers with other fellow cast members is when he, and they, learned that he was tone deaf. Fact number five. Sidney Poitier speaks the Russian language fluently. Fact number six. No Way Out was Sidney Poitier's first credited acting role in a feature film, but he had at least a few film jobs before No Way Out. He acted in three short films in the Army during the brief time that he was enlisted, and he acted in an uncredited film called Sepia Spinderella. Fact number seven. Sidney Poitier's film, In the Heat of the Night, won five Academy Awards, but none of them were for him. Poitier wasn't even nominated for a Best Actor Oscar for his performance as Virgil Tibbs. Some people say that he didn't get that nomination because 1967 was his biggest year as an actor, meaning that he had three of what some people consider his best films released all in that one year. In the Heat of the Night, To Sir With Love, and Guess Who's Coming to Dinner. So, the thought was that the nominating committee couldn't all get enough votes on one particular film in order to get him a nomination. So he was basically competing against himself and it didn't work in his favor. Others thought that he was snubbed because of his race. What do you think was the real reason why Sidney Poitier didn't receive any Best Actor nominations for his three films in 1967? Write your answers in the comments. I'd like to see them. Fact number eight, just a little bit of coincidence, Sidney Poitier and Carol O'Connor, the man best known as Archie Bunker, acted together in two films in their careers, The Defiant Ones and For Love of Ivy. 
About 20 years after For Love of Ivy, Carol O'Connor would go on to act in a TV readaptation of Forte's film, In the Heat of the Night. Fact number nine. Now this fact is not about something that Sidney Portier did, but it involves him heavily. His film, In the Heat of the Night, was the first ever Hollywood film in which the production's lighting was arranged in consideration of the complexions of black actors. Sidney Portier, Jester Hairston, and Khalil Bezalil. Prior to In the Heat of the Night, the goal was to correctly and favorably light white actors. Most of the times, they were the only people on screen. So, when black actors were on set, no changes were made to accommodate them. So film lighting just produced an excessive glare on their skin. Here's a quick bonus fact for you before we finish the list. If Jester Hairston looks familiar to you, you might remember him as the butler from In the Heat of the Night. I remember him as Raleigh Forbes from the 1980s sitcom Amen. He was also a composer, songwriter, music arranger, and choral conductor. In his lifetime, he was regarded as a leading expert on Negro spirituals and choral music. And finally, fact number 10. Sidney Portier was not just an actor professionally, he has some directing credits to his name too. Arguably, his most successful movie with him behind the camera as a director, instead of being leading man on the screen, was Stir Crazy, a 1980 comedy starring Gene Wilder and Richard Pryor. And unarguably, his least successful film as a director was Ghost Dad, a 1990 alleged comedy starring Bill Cosby. Ghost Dad was a low point for both Sidney and Bill. It was a box office failure and film critics of the day ripped the movie to shreds. 80s kids and a lot of others will remember the names Siskel and Ebert. They were the names that we all knew when it came to movie critics. Well, here is just the beginning of what Roger Ebert had to say about Ghost Dad. Quote, Ghost Dad is a desperately unfunny film. A strained, contrived construction that left me shaking my head in amazement. How does Bill Cosby, so capable on television, get himself into movie disaster zones like this movie and his previous one, Leonard Part Six? How could Sidney Poitier, a skilled filmmaker with an actor's sense of timing, have been the director of this mess? How did a production executive go for it? Who ever thought this was a good idea? I'll leave it there. I mean, I could go on, he certainly did for about two pages, but I think that you get the point. He didn't like it, and apparently neither did anyone else. Unfortunately for Sidney Portier and his fans who were hoping to see him direct another good film, Ghost Dad would be the last film he ever directed. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Ty Said What Ty Said channel. Please leave a thumbs up and comment so that we can get a discussion going. And share this video on all of your social media, especially your Facebook. That really helps me out a lot. And subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you can know when my next video is ready for you. And if you don't like what I'm saying, but you love it, feel free to hit that applaud button just below your video screen there and send me some donations, donations, donations. Yeah, baby. See you on the next video.